In this video, I'm going to show you how to create additional controller profiles for Dolphin on Xbox Series X and S. So now that you've got Dolphin set up and ready to go and are enjoying a number of your GameCube and Wii games, you've come to realize that the default control setup might not be to your liking, and that is perfectly fine. Thanks to Dolphin for UWP supporting controller profile selection, you're able to go and fine tune any game to your desire, save a profile for it, and load it up in the selected games. Now, unfortunately, you cannot configure these profiles directly on your Xbox Series X and S at this time, and as such, it does still require the PC version of Dolphin to accomplish. But in this video, we'll go ahead and take care of all of the necessary things you'll need to know so you can accomplish this task. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, as we get started, this guide is assuming that you have followed my Dolphin emulator install guide for getting Dolphin installed in all of the folders placed on your USB drive inside a Dolphin folder. If you have not followed my guide or don't have Dolphin installed, link to this will be in the description below. If you did things in your own way, you're just going to have to interpret the steps for your own personal setups. Because again, this guide is assuming you followed my steps. Now the next thing we're going to need to get our own custom controller profiles made is Dolphin for PC. This guide is focusing on PC. It will likely also work on Linux. Mac might not be as friendly, but just gonna grab the latest development version for X64 Windows. And if you have problems running it in a little bit, you will also probably need the 64-bit Visual C++ redistributable. So if it doesn't run for any reason, come back to the download page, grab this. And as always, links will be in the description below. But with Dolphin downloaded, we just need to get it extracted. It's in 7-zip format, so if you don't have 7-zip installed, get it installed and then just extract it. All right, perfect. Now open the Dolphin folder that you just extracted, and you will see the Dolphin executable here for PC. So we want to make this a portable install, so just right-click and create a new text document and name it Portable. There we go. Now when we run Dolphin, it will create a user folder inside of our Dolphin emulator folder. And then you can just click on yes if you want to do the uh, stat stuff, doesn't really matter. But we're going to go ahead and close out of this now that it has created our user folder. Now from here, go ahead and get your Xbox USB drive hooked up to your PC and opened up. And inside your Xbox USB drive, navigate into your Dolphin folder that you created during initial Dolphin for UWP install. And inside you'll see that there are a number of folders. And they correspond to all the folders that have just been created inside of our Dolphin user folder for the PC version. Now from here, just grab everything that's in your Dolphin folder and copy it into the user folder for the PC version. Replace things as needed. And now we could just go ahead and navigate back over to our Dolphin executable for PC here and launch it. Now to configure controls, you need to plug in one of your Xbox controllers. So we're just gonna plug in our Series S controller here. Navigate into the controllers tab and you will see port one is set to a standard controller and we can begin configuring all of our controller profiles from here and save them as dedicated profiles we can load up on the Xbox version separately. But you could go ahead and give everything a quick rundown, see that it is all registering as expected. Excellent. And once you've seen that everything's registering correctly, you could just begin changing button mappings as desired. So for example, I like to have my GameCube control set up like a Switch Pro controller. So that would change B to A and a to B on an Xbox controller. So for example, I'm gonna change this over to B, this over to A, and then same thing with X and Y. They're all swapped compared to what you see on a standard Xbox controller. Whereas everything else is perfectly fine. And that's the only change I wanna make. I, that's what I want to have as my personal default. But you could go through and change this up on a game by game basis and you can load any number of configurations this way. But once you have the profile set the way you want it, just head up over here into the top right corner and save it. I'll first name it, I guess. Then 
There we go. And then save the profile. Now let's make another one real quick that I have found pretty interesting, and it's the default blue retro controller setup. This one is actually pretty interesting. It more mirrors the physical button layout of a GameCube controller on Xbox controllers, which is pretty nice. But on this one, A is A, B is X, X is B, and Y is Y. So it more accurately mirrors the button placements on a physical GameCube controller, so it's actually pretty interesting. So I'm just going to make a new profile for this one. There we go. And save it. And now you can see in our drop down box here, we have two separate profiles available for our two new button layouts. But once you have all of your configurations made that you want to use, you can just close out of the controller configurator here, close out of the PC version of Dolphin. But now to transfer these new profiles over to your Xbox, just open up that user folder within your PC version of Dolphin go into the config folder, and inside you'll see that there is now a profiles folder that includes your custom profiles that you made for your GameCube games. So we're just gonna open up the config folder on our Xbox USB drive and drag the profiles folder right on in, and now we'll be able to access those profiles on Dolphin for UWP. So let's go ahead and give that a quick test, close out of all this, and transfer our USB drive back over to the Xbox. All right, so here we are inside of Dolphin. Let's go ahead and load up our settings menu by pressing start. Press A on the left box, head down to controls. Now you can press B, go over to the other panel. Select port one, and we can begin loading up our new profiles that we just made within the PC version. So here we go. Switch pro style, we're gonna go with that one first. And again, you can apply these styles to every single controller port on your Xbox, so you can have multiplayer support with all of your pre-made profiles very easily accessible. But anyway, let's just go ahead and load up Need for Speed Underground here and give this a quick test. That's right, Need for Speed Underground. And there we have it, Need for Speed Underground, using my new Switch Pro style controller button layout and it is working as intended. So now when I press B, that is now my break, because that's registering as the A button. And when I press A on my controller, it gives me the NOS boost. So there we go, my controller profile has been applied to my control settings perfectly. And then of course, if you're in a game and want to change profiles on the fly, you can just head into your in-game menu by pressing down L3, R3, heading over to the options tab, navigating down to controls and then you can select your controller port and change profiles on the fly so i'm going to change this over to my blue retro gamecube style real quick and give it another quick test so now i should be able to resume the game just by pressing a and there we go it has taken effect as desired so now x is my b button And it is all just working as intended. So yeah, this is working beautifully and it is just that quick to change profiles on the fly. But now let's discuss customizing controller profiles for Wii emulation. So we're gonna go ahead and quit out of Dolphin for Xbox here. Take our USB drive out of it and put it back on our PC. All right, now back on the PC, just get loaded back up into your Dolphin on PC folder here. And then load up the Dolphin folder on your Xbox. And if you haven't changed anything between the last time you're doing it, you don't need to copy everything back over. But if you've got like new game saves or things like that since you've edited settings, it's always a good idea to drag all of your stuff back over to overwrite. Make sure you have the most complete settings possible. But from here, just go ahead and get loaded back up into the PC version controller tab and now we're going to mess with the emulated Wiimote settings so just go into Wii remote port 1 click on configure so for this example I'm going to try to make a profile that will work for Metroid Other M so this one is just only using a Wiimote so I don't need to have a nunchuck as extension here or a motion plus I don't really need either of those right now now make sure that your device is set to WG Input 0 Xbox One game controller that you have attached to your computer and that you can assign buttons with it, otherwise obviously you can't make a profile. But I'm not quite sure what the default button mapping is going to be like on Other M. I haven't tried this yet, so this is kind of an experiment more than anything at the moment, just to give a good example. But we're going to go ahead and set up our D-pad in basic 
um, Wiimote controls here. Then we're gonna select our rumble motor. There we go. And now, the thing about Metroid Other M, it makes you toggle your Wii Remote orientation between horizontal and vertical, so upright and sideways, I guess. And I want to assign these to my two thumbsticks just so we can get an idea of what is happening here. So sideways left, upright, right. Okay, perfect. And so that ought to do it for basic controls. Now we need to get motion input activated here. So first thing we need to do is get our IR pointer set up here. So I'm gonna assign that to my right thumbstick. So there we go, that is now assigned, perfect. And now for tilt controls, I'm gonna put this on my left analog stick. So just going to change these ones to the left. And again, you can set these to whatever you want. This is just what I'm doing for this example. And now for shake, I'm just gonna assign all of these to my left bumper. And I'm not quite remembering which motion inputs this one really needs. So I'm just gonna kind of randomly assign a few things here for the rest. So as you can see, I'm now shaking my remote whenever I uh, press the left bumper. I got my tilt controls, I've got IR pointer, and we've got swinging motion controls here. Don't have everything assigned, but it should be enough to give us some baselines on which we need to test. So I'm just gonna save this profile as Metroid Other M, and let's move back over to the Xbox, give it a test, see how things are looking and performing and if we need to adjust anything. So go ahead and close out of your controller settings menu and close out of the PC version of Dolphin. We just need to get it copied over to our Xbox USB drive. So it's the same as GameCube. We're gonna go into our user folder on the PC version, config folder, and our profiles folder. And if we go into the Wiimote folder, we'll see our other M configuration right there and any GameCube ones you also made. So we're just gonna go over to our config folder on the Xbox USB drive now. And I'm just gonna overwrite my current profile folder. So there we go. Now let's go ahead and give it a test. So just gonna get everything closed down on the PC side, move it over to the Xbox and see how well this profile handles. All right, so here we are back on Dolphin for Xbox Series X and S. So same thing as with GameCube, just go into your settings by pressing start. Select the box on the left, head down to controls, press B, go over to the right box. Now select Wii with A. And we're gonna go ahead and choose Wiimote port one and choose our Metroid Other M config file here. So that way we can give it a shot. So now we're just gonna press B to exit out of this, press start to leave the settings menu and let's launch into Other M and see what's up. All right, let's give this a shot and see what happens. So,
And there we go, a profile that works for Metroid Other M, probably not the most streamlined, so I'm going to want to have to go back in and edit this, but it is fully functional to play the game. We have all the functionality intact that we are so far needing, able to fully control and do everything as needed, and even activating the upright remotes to charge missiles and turn it on and off of sideways mode for charging missiles and uh, controlling the game itself. So does work, fits the example purposes I needed it to today, but definitely able to streamline this a lot more as more time is put into it. And of course you can customize any number of Wii game profiles with the PC version of Dolphin as well. So for example, you could set up Wiimote Nunchuck. There's already default profiles available on Dolphin for UWP for Wiimote Nunchuck, but if you want to customize button mappings, you are able to do so, then you just save a new profile. And then of course, Classic Controller is also already configured. This one you don't really need to mess with a whole lot because it's already set up as a Classic Controller. But you could also attach a Motion Plus to your Wiimote emulation, so that way you can play games like Skyward Sword. And then as always, you just come in and name your profile, save it, and then you could copy that profile from your Wiimote folder into your Xbox USB drive. But button mapping on Wii is going to be extremely game by game basis, personal preference. Just remember your buttons, your motion simulation, and then your extension for mapping all the different extension things. And of course you also have extension motion simulation as well. So unfortunately, due to being stuck with just Xbox controller input, you are gonna need to get creative when it comes to motion simulation, but for the most part, you should be able to get most things up and running and playable. And just as a heads up, if you find any profiles online that you want to use, they're already pre-made for Xbox controllers, you should be able to add them pretty seamlessly onto your Xbox USB drive as well, as long as they're configured for that WG input. But we're going to go ahead and call it here for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope it helps you get all of your personal controller configurations up and running to your desires. Now here at the end, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions, thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are just truly amazing and we couldn't do it without you. But until next time my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.